So welcome to lecture seven on linear spaces. So in your first undergraduate linear algebra class, you learn about the linear subspaces of some dimension r inside an ambient vector space of dimension m. And you gain a thorough understanding of how to deal with these objects. And then much later, maybe in graduate school, you learn about the parameter space of these objects, which is the Grassmannian. So you first learn about linear spaces, and later you learn about the Grassmannian. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to turn the arrow around. In the context of tropical geometry, it's more systematic to first start with the Grassmannian, so to define the tropical Grassmannian, and then we will define linear spaces in their generality based on the Grassmannian. Okay, so we're going to first introduce the parameter space of the objects we're interested in, and then we're going to introduce the objects themselves. Let's, but let's do a little bit of classical math. So the classical math, we have the uh, Grassmannian GRM. So this uh, is embedded as a projective variety in a projective space of dimension m choose r minus 1 by the Plucker coordinates. These are the r by r minors of an r by m matrix whose row span is the, uh, the linear space we seek to describe. The Grassmannian as a projective variety is defined by the Plucker ideal. which I'll denote by I R M. So this is in a polynomial ring, an M choose R unknowns, the Plucker coordinates. And uh, just to show an example, the uh, case 3, 6 is interesting. So this is the Grassmannian of three-dimensional vector subspaces of an ambient six-dimensional vector space. And the Plucker ideal in this case, is generated by 35 quadrics. Thirty-five quadratic relations in the 20 variables. 20 is 6 choose 3, which are denoted P, I, J, K for Plucker. And uh, let me give you one of them. So i, j, k are increasing indices between 1 up to 6. So p, i, j, k represents the, uh, the sub-determinant with column indices i, j, k of a 3 by 6 matrix. And then a typical Plucker relation looks like this. p, 1, 2, 3 times p, 4, 5, 6 minus p, 1, 2, 4 times p, 3, 5, 6 plus P, 1, 2, 5, P, 3, 4, 6 minus P, 1, 2, 6, P, 3, 4, 5. You can see 1 and 2 remain in their place and the other four indices cycle around with an alternating sign. So uh, this also is treated in the uh, book invitation on nonlinear algebra and the particular this G36 case appears as example 5.9. If you're a user of the computer algebra system Macaulay 2, there's a convenient one-line command for making this ideal called Grassmannian. So if you type Grassmannian with appropriate uh, version of R and M, then you get uh, a basis uh, of these quadrics. So it's always generated by quadratic relations. Now let's look at the support of uh, such a Plucker vector. So the support of P in the Grassmannian. So if I have a point in the Grassmannian, so P is now a point in projective space with M choose R coordinates, and the support is the simply the set of all indices where this is non-zero. This is called the matroid. So is its matroid. So the matroid is the collection of all R element subsets in 1 up to M 
such that the corresponding Plücker coordinate of that linear space is non-zero. So uh, those index sets are called bases. So if it's the Plücker coordinate is non-zero, it's called a basis in matroid theory, and otherwise it's called a non-basis. Now, if every Plücker coordinate is non-zero, if we have full support, then one says the matroid is uniform. I want to come back to this. Okay. Now, of course, every point P on the Grassmannian represents a linear subspace of dimension R, so represents a linear space in K to the M. But how do you write this down? Right? This is a very nice exercise in multilinear algebra given the M choose R Plücker coordinates of a, a linear space. How do you actually write down the linear space? And what you can do is you can write down linear forms that cut this out. So it's cut out by the following collection of linear forms, which you can read off from the Plücker coordinate vector. So this is on page 180 in the book. So the linear equations are the sum this like this, sum j from 1 to r plus 1, from 1 to r plus 1, it's an alternating sum, minus 1 to the j, then you go p i minus i j, I'll explain that, times x i j, where capital I is an index set, i1, up to i r plus 1, so it's an index set in the first m positive integers of size r plus 1. It's an r plus 1 element index set in the integers from 1 up to r, and so i I can think of as an increasing sequence of these r plus 1 elements and minus i j simply remove, it means remove the jth entry in the list, right? You keep that order, and then you move that index over and you use that as the space variable xij. So this is a linear form in unknowns x1, x2, up to xm. And that linear form, these p's are constants. Then this linear form vanishes on the linear space and these linear forms uh, cut out the linear space. Okay, so this is how you transition between the Plücker coordinate vectors and the uh, equational description of a linear subspace. Now these linear equations have a very good property, so that's lemma 4, 3, 16, namely they form a tropical basis. First of all these linear spaces are called circuits and the lemma says that these circuits form a tropical basis. So a circuit in a, let's say, space of linear forms is a non-zero linear form of minimal support, minimal with respect to containment, right? So, so this uh, uses relatively few of the variables, at most r plus 1, right? Let's think of m as big and r as small, so this is a, uh, a linear form that vanishes in our linear space that have relatively small support and I claim that these are precisely the inclusion minimal support sets among non-zero linear forms vanishing in our space and the content is that they form a tropical basis. Now, they define, <coughs> therefore, what we call the tropicalized linear space In, since I'm working with homogeneous linear forms, this is an Rm mod the all one vector given by P. Okay, so what do I mean? P is a point on the Grassmannian. It defines a classical linear subspace. That classical linear subspace is a linear variety. It's defined by the ideal of linear forms. So we can tropicalize it like any variety according to the fundamental theorem. 
And then the, this tropicalization satisfies the structure theorem. It's balanced with the correct dimension and so on. And such an object we call a tropicalized linear space. We're starting with the classical linear space over a field with the valuation. And then the corresponding tropical variety will be a tropicalized linear space. And the claim that the circuits form a tropical basis, of course, there's a finite list of these, right? At most, M choose R plus one of them. The fact that uh, they form a tropical basis means that the pre-variety, the tropical pre-variety cut out by these uh, tropical linear forms defines the correct tropical linear space. Now, based on this lemma, we can boost this up a little bit and state the following theorem. That's 4, 3, 17. That says the classical bijection between the Grassmannian, the usual Grassmannian of R dimensional subspaces in K to the M, so the Grassmannian and the R dimensional vector subspaces. of k to the m induces a certain bijection on the tropical side, namely, so it induces a bijection between a tropical Plucker vector w and a corresponding tropicalized subspace. So to make this precise, this bijection is between the tropicalization of the Grassmannian, G0, Rm. Now the zero is a notational device we use in the book to remind the reader that this is really in the torus, right? So the Grassmannian is a projective variety, but G upper zero is the open Grassmannian where we remove the, uh, the coordinate hyperplanes, right? So really this is the, the Grassmannian in the torus. We have the projective space, we're removing the M choose two M choose R coordinate planes, and uh, that's the object we're tropicalizing. Or in English, we're simply taking the Plucker relations, but we're interpreting them inside the Laurent polynomial ring. Okay? And then this is the set of all weight vectors whose initial ideal is monomial free. And then let's say we take a M choose R uh, long vector in the value group. So if I have a, a tropical point W whose coordinates are in the, value pro, in the value group, then on the other side of the bijection, we get the set of uniform in the matroid sense, tropicalized um, R minus one dimensional planes in the uh, projective space or tropical projective torus Rm mod the all one vector, right? Now uniform is built into the definition. So here we are making the coordinate planes, we're assuming the coordinate planes are non-zero. So this means we're looking only at uh, points in the torus. That is to say, we're only looking at points in the Grassmannian whose corresponding matroid is the uniform matroid in, in this theorem, okay? Okay, so what this says is there is a bijection between points on the Grassmannian and linear subspaces over the field K with valuation, and you can tropicalize on both sides and you get a compatible diagram. It induces a, a bijection, okay? Now what's the key idea? The key idea in the construction is exactly these circuits. So let me state this one more time very explicitly because this is really very important. So the key idea in the construction and the proof is that you can define the tropicalized linear space using the tropical circuits, right? I mean, in some sense, we stated this already, right? This was the content here of the lemma that says that they form a tropical basis. But let me make this even more explicit, right? So 
Let me take the classical circuits. These are the, these linear forms of minimal support vanishing on the linear space and I just tropicalize, right? So uh, let's do it, right? So this is, I'm going to use the following notation. I'm going to use the notation fi of u. Now u is an unknown now with m coordinates, right? So I'm in r to the m. I have coordinates u1, u2, up to u m, but modulo tropical scaling. Right? So this is now tropical equations. And the equations are, I take the tropical sum over all indices i in same index set as before. I take omega i capital I minus i, and then tropical times ui, so this is in classical notation, the minimum over all i in big I, tropical Plucker coordinate, omega capital I minus i plus ui, and capital I is exactly the same, it runs over the r plus 1 element subsets of 1 up to m. Okay, so this is the tropical circuit and uh, the fact that they intersect correctly is the key idea also in this proof. Okay, so this is tropicalized linear spaces and we have not yet come to tropical linear spaces. Okay, well, all we talked about is tropicalized linear spaces. Let's digress a little bit before we get there. Let's digress a tiny bit and talk about phylogenetics. So let's talk a little bit about the case R equals 2. So if we have two-dimensional vector subspaces of k to the m, so these would be lines in the corresponding projective space. So what can we say about tropical lines in projective space? Well, they uh, have a very nice structure as trees and these trees play a role in uh, evolutionary biology and phylogenetics. So uh, the point is that the tropical Grassmannian G2M, so these are tropical lines and tropical projective M minus one space that this Grassmannian has an interpretation, is known in phylogenetics as the space of trees, space of phylogenetic trees with M leaves. And that's corollary 4.5 so a tree combinatorially is a connected graph without cycles, but here they are embedded. Right? So they are embedded like all tropical varieties, so they are one-dimensional connected um, polyhedral complexes with bound and unbounded edges, and uh, the tropical Grassmannian 2M is the parameter space. So those trees are the lines we're interested in. Right? Those trees are the tropicalized lines in Rm mod the all one vector. Now if m, if r is equal to 2, in fact there is no distinction between tropical and tropicalized. So we can put this in parentheses, so in this case where r is 2, these two concepts are the same, so let's see some examples. So let's say if m is equal to 6, so we are talking about two-dimensional vector subspaces in k to the 6th, or classical geometry-wise, about lines in projective five-dimensional space. So how do they look like? Well, generically there are two types. There is this type. And there's this type, okay? So these are trivalent trees with the six leaves. These leaves are the unbounded rays. So if you draw a line in the plane, it has three unbounded rays, north, east, and southwest. 
If you have a line in three space, it looks like this, right? It has one bounded edge, my torso, and four unbounded half rays. And if you're up in five dimensional projector space, that's how a look, line looks like. Uh, this type is sometimes called the snowflake. This type is called the caterpillar. And higher dimensions, there are more and more of these types. And together with the labeling and the metric, they make up the space of phylogenetic trees also known as the tropical Grassmannian 2M. Now, the next case is also very interesting. So example 4, 4, 10 concerns the fan trop G0, 3, 6, right? So this is the tropicalization of the Grassmannian 3, 6. So, uh, well, why is this a fan? Well, because it's a constant coefficient situation. The Plücker relations I wrote down up there, all their coefficients are plus or minus one, so they're defined in the constant coefficient regime. The tropicalization of plus or minus one is zero, right? So this is a fan, balanced, strongly con but balanced, connected in co-dimension one and, and all that of the correct dimension. And this fan lives in R20 mod R1 lives in this 19-dimensional ambient Plucker space, 20 is 6, choose 3. And this parametrizes according to the theorem over there, um, parametrizes the uh, uniform tropicalized uh, um, planes in this ambient five-dimensional space. Okay, so now we're replacing these lines by planes, and they're two-dimensional trees, right? So a plane will be a connected in co-dimension one, pure, two-dimensional, balanced, polyhedral complex, looks like a tree, just one dimension higher, okay? And that's the Grassmannian. Now this three, six case is the last case where tropicalized still agrees with tropical, and that's no surprise to matroid theorists because in this rank three and six elements, everything is realizable, and so it is in rank R equals two, but from that point on, uh, there will be a distinction as we shall see. Okay, we're slowly, slowly approaching the definition of a tropical linear space, but we're not quite there yet. We're gonna get there, but we're not there yet. We first need the Dressian. So we need to replace the Grassmannian by the Dressian. And I'm going to set this up at some generality. I'm going to define the Dressian of a given matroid. Okay, so now M is a matroid of rank R on the M element ground set, one, two, up to M. And this by definition is the tropical pre-variety defined by all tropicalized tropical Plucker quadrics. So this Dressian, we're gonna note by dir sub m, and it lives in R cardinality of b mod along one vector. So B is the support, so B is the set of bases. So B is a subset, is a collection of R element subsets of an M element set that satisfies some axiom, which I'll spare you at the moment, right? So that's B. And then by the tropical Plücker relations, I mean the following, you write down all the trop tropical Plücker quadrics, for example, by going to Macaulay 2 and saying Grassmannian. 
and then you zero out all Plucker coordinates that you don't like, all Plucker coordinates that are not in B, that are not indexed by B, right? So now you get a big system of quadratic relations. You take all of these quadratic relations, a finite list, each of them defines a tropical hypersurface, minimum is attained twice, you intersect them all in an ambient space of dimension the number of bases, okay? So that purely combinatorial object is the, called the Dressian of the matroid. Now if matroids are scary, then you can assume that M is the uniform matroid. That is to say, we take the full support set, and in this case, we use the notation dir quadration of Rm, and this lives in the familiar space of all tropical Plucker coordinates, M choose R mod the all one vector, right? So that's the Dressian. So the Dressian is the pre-variety in Plucker space, the Grassmannian is the variety. Let me say this one more time. You have a long, long list of quadratic Plucker relations. They do not, in general, form a tropical basis. So in general, there will be a distinction between the tropical variety and the tropical pre-variety defined by all of these quadratic equations that look like this. All of these quadratic equations that are handed to you by Macaulay II upon entering the command Grassmann. The tropical pre-variety is the Dressian, and it contains the tropical Grassmannian. Let's write this down. So, the tropical Grassmannian. Is contained in the Dressian. So uh, this holds in the uniform case, so notationally, so the tropicalization of the classical Grassmannian thought of in the torus is contained in the Dressian, but in fact this is true for all restrictions to matroids. So by Ger M I simply mean you take the Plucker relations, you zero out those Plucker relations that are not indexed by B. You look at the remaining ideal in the Rouen polynomial ring in the other variables and the basic variables, and then you calculate the tropical variety, and that's contained in Durham the Dressian, and that's true for every matroid. Okay. Now the heroes of the story are the people who we named these objects after. So Hermann Grassmann was a school teacher. So Grassmann, who uh, who's invented sort of this aspect of analytic geometry. So he lived from 1809 to 1877. And after Grassmann, the Grassmannian is named. The Dressian we named after Andreas Stress. So Andreas Stress is one of my personal mathematical heroes. So I met him as a very young person, so he is alive. He was born in 1938. And I met him as a very, very young mathematician, a student, and he was extremely inspiring. So I learned about matroids and oriented matroids and many, many, many things. Phylogenetics from Andreas Stress and so in his honor, we named this the Dressian. It's very much in his spirit. He invented the objects given in the Dressian in some other language. And perhaps uh, of note is that Andreas Stress is a member of this institute. He is an external scientific member. So this Max Planck Institute has six external scientific members. And he actually is uh, a member. He hasn't been around a lot. He lives in Bielefeld um, because he's um, not very good health right now, but uh, for many years he was connected. He was in Shanghai for a number of years. He was a director of a joint 
Institute between the Max Planck Society and the Chinese Academy of Sciences and Computational Biology. So he very much saw the connection to evolutionary biology. And uh, even on that domain, he has been a great source of inspiration to me. So, so both Grassmann and Dress very inspiring. And we're interested in the inclusion of the Grassmannian in the Dressian. So if you have a point in the Dressian, so if W is in the Dressian, now of a matroid, let's write LW for the tropical pre-variety in RM mod all one defined by the tropical circuit. And the tropical circuits are over here. So that's F, I in the variables U1 up to UM. And we do this for every index set I of cardinality M plus 1 out of the first M positive integer. So now I'm turning things on my head. You pick a matroid. Now with the matroid, you have the Dressian. You pick a point, W, on the dress. You pick a point, W, whose coordinates are indexed by the bases that satisfy all the quadratic relations tropically. Okay, you're on the pre-variety. And then you simply write down this tropical linear form. It defines a tropical hyperplane. You intersect this finite list of tropical hyperplanes, and you get a pre-variety. So here is the main theorem. The remarkable fact that this, in fact, defines a nice object. So this is theorem four, four, five. Let's say M is a matroid of rank R on the ground set 1, 2 up to M, and W is any point in the associated dress. Now comes the definition. So we're going to define the tropical linear space. This defines now for the very first time. We're going to define the tropical linear space. The associated tropical linear space, LW, well, what is it? It's this intersection, right? It's this LW, right? So this I'm going to call a tropical linear space. Now, this certainly includes all the tropicalized linear spaces by the previous theorem. Right? So we already know that every tropicalized linear space is one of these. But these are more general. Now we need to justify the term linear space. I'm going to do that right now. Okay. So this object is nice. It's a pure R minus one dimensional balanced. In this case, uh, uh, all the weights on the uh, top dimensional cells are one. It's balanced. It's contractible as a topological space, polyhedral complex in the ambient space with coordinates u, which is Rm mod all one. Right? So this justifies, it behaves like a good object. So in general, pre-varieties are nasty. They're all over the place. They don't have to be, they're generally not balanced. They're not connected through co-dimension one and connected through co-dimension one, I should have said that. This, this has all the good properties. And uh, we call this object a tropical linear space. So a tropical linear space is the tropical solution set to the circuit equations derived from a point W in the Dressian. Now, a couple other parts to this theorem. So, two more sentences. The recession fan 
of this linear space of LW. So as a cartoon, you can think about these pictures. What we're talking about are pictures like this, where this is R minus one dimension, right? So we're talking about trees of higher dimension. These are these contractible spaces. So the recession fan of LW is uh, the Bergman fan. Um, which is purely associated to the matroid. So this is a fan. So this is the constant coefficient version. So let me say this in two different ways. If you're given a matroid M of rank R on 1 up to M, then the Bergman fan is the solution set to, uh, to these equations where all the W's are 0. Right? So all I'm saying is the minimum is attained twice for every circuit. So you have a matroid. Ground set 1 up to m. You look at the vectors in u space with coordinates u1 up to um. And you take those vectors where the minimum is attained twice over all subsets of coordinates indexed by circuits. This object is also a, uh, a realization of the uh, cone of the, uh, the geometric lattice, so the geometric lattice of the matroid is another way to think about this. So it's a, you look at the flag complex of the geometric lattice, and then uh, and this is the Bergman fan, studied years ago by Adila and Clivens. Um, and one more part, moreover, there's yet another way to think about this. LW is a tropical cycle of degree one. i.e. dot, 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 dot. What does this mean? Well, a tropical cycle is simply a polyhedral complex that satisfies the conclusion of the structure theorem. So if you have an object out there that's balanced and so on, we call this a tropical cycle. Okay? And what's the degree? Well, the degree is the number of intersection points with a, of a linear space of complementary dimension. In this case, you can just take, you know, these Bergman fans. Okay? And another way, so, so linear spaces are exactly you know, tropical cycles of degree one. That's what they should be. Right? So if you have a balanced polyhedral complex, which when intersected against any tropical variety makes a non-negative integer and the number one is attained, then it's a linear space. Okay? That's another characterization. So, so this is the theorem that describes tropical linear spaces and various aspects of tropical linear spaces. Let me make some remarks about the uh, relationship between tropicalized linear spaces coming from points on the Grassmannian and tropical linear spaces coming from points on the Dresden. So the inclusions up there are generally strict. And moreover, the objects on the um, not right hand side, left hand side, the objects on the left hand side, so this tropical Grassmannian here, both in the uniform case and the matroid specific case, the tropical Grassmannian depends on the algebraic structure. It depends on the characteristic of the residue field. Okay? So we have a field capital K that's a field with evaluation, like the p-adic numbers. Well, the rationals with the p-adic valuation that has characteristic zero, but the residue field, the finite field has characteristic p. And so these Grassmannians, these tropical Grassmannians depend on, you know, whether p is zero or not. Okay? So that will depend on the residue characteristic. But the right-hand side doesn't depend on anything, right? It's a purely combinatorial construction. 
purely combinatorial construction, right? So you start with the matroid, you write down all the circuits and plug correlation and so on, and so this doesn't depend on anything. It's just an intersection on, it um, doesn't depend on al any algebraic geometric data. Now, how to see the difference? Well, so there are some matroids that reveal the difference. For example, the Fano matroid or the Pappus and non-Pappus matroids, which are described and pictorially shown in the book. So here are the rank is three. So for the Fano matroid, that's a particular matroid where M is seven, uh, which can be realized uh, over characteristic two, but not over any other characteristic. And then there's a non-Fano matroid where the opposite is true, and that uh, sort of shows this characteristic dependence. Uh, the non-Pappus matroid uh, for M equals eight and R equals three is a matroid that's not realizable over any field but you can certainly run through and construct a tropical linear spaces based on it with uh, having that matroid for its recession fan and they will not come from any classical linear space. So, so here you get uh, tropical linear spaces that do not come from any, that are not tropicalized linear space in any sense uh, over a field, over a commutative field. And here you have tropical linear spaces that can be lifted only in characteristic two. Okay, so that's uh, Interesting. I'm going to wrap up with uh, a couple of remarks about uh, polytopes. There's another way to think about these linear spaces from the point of view of the matroid base polytope or matroid polytope. So if you're given a matroid, then the corresponding matroid polytope is the convex hull of all 0, 1 vectors indexed by bases. So this is called the matroid polytope. Right, so again, calligraphic B is the bases. It's a collection of R element subsets of one up to M, satisfying nice axioms, mirroring the Plucker relation. So this is a collection of R sets. E sub B is the sum over those, is the zero one incidence vectors, right? So I take a, an R element subset and I'm writing it as a zero one vector with R entries one and the remaining entries zero, okay? And then I take the course convex hull of those zero one vectors. Now let's pretend you have never seen any of the many, 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 many definitions of a matroid. They're all equivalent. There are 50 different definitions and the remarkable thing, they're all different. So let's assume you've never seen a definition of a matroid. I'm going to give you a definition of a matroid now. Suppose you take a collection of subsets. You're going to call, start with the B. Well, you can certainly form this polytope and let's say they all have cardinality R, but that's not even needed, right? You make this polytope. Now this polytope has vertices and edges and so on. It's a matroid if and only if all edges are parallel translates of differences of unit vectors, EI minus EJ, okay? So this polytope has a bunch of edges, right? They connect two vertices, both zero, one vectors. Now look at the difference vector, right? The difference vector is a difference, right? Between one zero one vector and another zero one vector. The best thing it could be is a one, is a swap between the i-th and the j-th position, right? So if that difference vector is ei minus ej for some indices ij, if that is true for every edge, we're gonna call that a matroid. And that's a definition of a matroid, okay? That's the matroid base polytope. Now, this polytope in the uniform case is called the hypersimplex, okay? So if uh, we take all our subsets as the hypersimplex, so the generalized octahedron, so if R is two and M is four, there are six, zero, one vectors, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one. 
Right? You take that convex hull in four space, you see an octahedron. So here's a lemma. <clears throat> four, four, six. Suppose you have any point W in R to the B. I want to tell you whether it lies in the Dresden. It lies in the Dresden if and only if something holds. Now this lemma you can use as the definition for the Dresden. I gave you two minutes ago a definition of matroids for those who have never seen a definition of matroid. Now I'm going to give you by the same token a definition of Dresden for those who did not quite follow and com completely internalize the definition of Dresden. Okay, so you can use this as a definition of the Dresden. So point W lies in the Dresden of a matroid if and only if the regular subdivision the regular polyhedral subdivision delta W of P sub M has some property. Okay? Now PM is this polytope. This polytope has one vertex for each basis. W is a real vector that has each one coordinate for each basis. So now I can, you know, make a subdivision. I can put this matroid polytope into the screen plane. I put weights out. I pull, pull towards you. I took, look at the lower hull, and I get a polyhedral subdivision, okay, in the familiar way. And this lies in the dress, and if and only if this is a matroid subdivision. Now what does a matroid subdivision mean? Well, that each cell is again a PM prime for some other M prime. Right? So a matroid subdivision, so a matroid is a, is this, has this property if each edge is a parallel translate of EI minus EJ. Now if you know a little bit of Lie theory, right, that's the root system of type A M minus 1. So yes, you can do this for other root systems in case you wonder. But here the point is I have this matroid polytope. The edges are roots. I have the regular polyhedral subdivision. If each piece in the subdivision again has that same property, I'm going to call that a matroid subdivision. And that is, in fact, a definition of the dressing. And it becomes a lemma if the previous definition of dressing made sense to you. So if you understood this definition, then this is a lemma. If you didn't like this definition, then this is a definition. Let me end by giving a forward pointer to uh, section 5.4. So we won't have time next Wednesday to, uh, to talk about this section, but it's a it's a beautiful story. So the section is called Arrangements of Trees. And this is based on a paper with the title How to Draw Tropical Plains. Now when you Google this, often you get to a site that's called How to Draw Tropical Plants. Okay? But we don't mean tropical plants, we mean tropical planes, right? So if R is equal to 3, then a linear space is a two-dimensional, you know, object that looks like a tree, right? But you can actually realize it by M trees, namely there will be M trees at infinity, right? There will be an arrangement of M trees. In each of the M coordinate directions, you will see a tree. How so? Well, if you have a classical two-dimensional plane and you set one coordinate to zero, then in that coordinate plane you see a line. That line is a tree. You can tropicalize it, right? So you really have an arrangement of M trees. In fact, the classical plane to begin with was a plane with M lines removed, right? Some people call this a line arrangement. So really, a line arrangement is a tree arrangement. Right? So plane is the same as a line arrangement. 
is a tree arrangement is a tropical plane. And then here, section 5.4 shows you many pictures of how to paste these trees together. Thanks for your attention. And time for questions. Yes, that would be covered by the Dresden. So here in the first theorem, so the question was, I should repeat the question, what happens if uh, one, one or more than one of the Plucco coordinates is zero? Um, what happens to the corresponding plane? Where does it land? Well, here in the first theorem, or I guess I erased it. So in the first theorem that I erased, we had this hypothesis that we're working with G upper zero. And we had in this bijection only the uniform tropicalized linear spaces. So we're only looking at linear spaces that, whose corresponding matroid is uniform. But if one or more than one of the Plucco coordinates is zero, then we, are, then we are in this setting, right? So that's the reason in some sense why we're going to this setting because it gives us the flexibility of prescribing zeros in, uh, for some of the Plucco coordinates. But classically, this will be a perfectly good plane or line, right? It could happen that a line or plane meets the coordinate planes, you know, in more degenerate ways. Okay, so the question is, is there a connection between cluster algebras and tropical Grassmannians? Very much so. So uh, in the theory of cluster algebras, one sort of takes a different take on commutative algebra, and one has a very highly structured uh, system of generators, and this ties in very much with positivity. Right? So, so there's a notion of a positive Grassmannian, and uh, in the cluster algebra approach, one really zooms in at the positive Grassmannian, that is to say, those points on the real Grassmannian where all Plucco coordinates are positive. Well, let's really focus on that. And there one has a very tight connection. So one can talk about the uh, positive tropical Grassmannian, and this is very, that's exactly an image of the cluster complex. So the tropical positive Grassmannian knows in some sense about the cluster structure. I'm lying a little bit, what I'm saying is true for small r and m, for, for large M, uh, the cluster complex becomes infinite. It's a bit more delicate. Now, but you can do the tropicalization inside, outside. You can also talk about the tropical Dresden, right? And there's a beautiful new theorem that was proved in February this year by Lauren Williams and uh, well, published in, in February by Lauren Williams and David Spire that says on the positive points, you have uh, an equality. Right? So in general, you have sort of these very serious realizability obstructions, but thanks to the cluster algebra structure, you do not see this on the positive part. So everything is very, very nice on, on the positive part, and you might be thinking about integral systems, and so do I. Other questions? Ah, okay. So the question was, uh, the non-Papos matroid can be realized, but we have to leave, you know, commutative fields. We have to go to uh, division rings. Is there anything interesting? I think the answer is yes. I have not worked on this, but you could certainly study, you know, valuations on division rings. So you can enlarge fields and go to non-commutative situations and study valuations. And I think this would be very interesting. In fact, there's a very active area of uh, research on sort of tropical schemes and tropical ideals in general. And I believe this circle of ideas of non-commutative realizations uh, plays a big role. And I think you've done some work in this direction, so absolutely. So what I talked about here is classical commutative fields with a rank one valuation.
I see. So is there a bound on the size of a, a tropical, the, the size of a, a tropical basis? Uh, yes, there's a naive bound, and that's m choose r plus 1, right? So certainly if you write down all of these, but of course if m is large, that's way over counting. So the question, how many circuits do you actually need? You know, it's a very good question. I don't think this has been studied in, in much detail. We should study it. Let's take this as a problem. So I'm not sure. This is a, mat a purely matroid theoretic question, and it should have a good answer. And I'm not aware of any paper that, I mean, there might be one, but I'm current, right now not aware. Very, very good question. Let's take it as a motivation to study this, right? How many circuits do you need? Now, you could also ask a different question. How about a tropical basis for the Grassmannian? That's a much more difficult question, because there, there is no a priori bound. I mean, this can have arbitrarily high degree, so there we're running into all the difficulties of Neoff's universality theorem. But the way that you asked the question, it's, uh, I think, a very tractable one that would be interesting to study. Okay, so if there are no further questions, let's take a five-minute break.